We all know what DeAndre Hopkins can do on the field. 11 touchdowns and over 1,500 yards last season alone. The Astros are the hottest team in baseball, and they are completely dominating at the plate. But nine strikeouts through five and a third innings pitch. But even with 33 wins and being a three seed in this tournament, they're always playing like the underdogs. Hop also told me to be on the lookout for a movie that is currently in the works about his mom. It will tell her inspiring story of courage and perseverance. Through the slow start to the season, the injuries, the roster changes, they've stayed the course and they are now peaking at just the right time. And, and mentioning Fuller, that's exactly why they brought him here. Things like we saw last game to, to make things easier on Hopkins, to present that deep threat. And that's where the Texans need to figure out how they're going to replace that moving forward. The Texans added offensive lineman Titus Howard in the first round last night. He arrived in Houston this morning. This series is tied up thanks to a huge performance from James Harden, 38 points in the locker room after the game. If he felt like he had settled in there by the third quarter and he said, no, I felt great the whole game. He said there's more to rhythm than just scoring and I think everybody agrees with that. The energy he brings on defense will be big, especially here in the immediate future without Clint Capella, guys. As the Astros look to clinch a spot in the postseason, they could do that either with a win here tonight or a Tampa Bay loss. What more could you ask for on Sunday? I know, I guess they just don't know how to win less it's in overtime. <laughs> they like the excitement and the drama and they sure brought that tide. It was good to see them. I just want to ask you a quick question first. So the Texans obviously made the big play they really needed to after that gift from Frank Reich and overtime, but they also missed far too many opportunities before that to punch it in the end zone and ice things away. So, Wex, how should the fans feel right now about Deshaun Watson and his development in those pressure-packed moments? All we can really take from OTAs is attitude. I think he's got a great attitude, a great work ethic, and I'm just happy to see the excitement about the offensive line this season because that's something we haven't seen in a long time. We'll see. Zachary is really being yeah. the number one target of the Seagulls offense thus far. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, Ertz has been a name that has been brought up time and time again in the press conferences this week here in Houston, but also guys like Alshon Jeffries. They know that uh, Foles can spread the ball around, and what they're really focused on this Texan secondary is not giving up the big plays. They have really struggled with that. Uh, Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton came up here and carved up the defense a couple weeks ago when they got their first loss after that nine-game win streak. I think uh, Hilton had four catches for over 20 yards. One of those was a 60-yard catch, so their big focus right now when it comes to Nick Foles and this Eagles offense is not giving up those big yardage plays. They want to make them drive the length of the field hope they can get a mistake a turnover here and there really just a poor performance from the Texans in all three phases today starting with the special teams and giving up that fake punt for a touchdown that got them behind the eight ball early and then the offense just beat themselves all game long with penalties and silly mistakes but high IQ regardless you're a very intelligent person <laughs> I appreciate that. very Thank intelligent you. person tell me what you like to do off the field and what you kind of did this summer when you went back to school we asked coach O'Brien about that decision he did not want to talk about it said it was personal but the players, they were willing to talk with us about that. J.J. Watt, Jadavian Clowney, and Deshaun Watson himself told us about that 12-hour bus ride that Deshaun took in order to avoid air pressure on a flight. For the Rockets to have success this series, everyone has to be impacting the game. For guys like Harden and Gordon, that means scoring. And then for guys like Capella and Tucker, it means crashing the boards, playing physical, not letting the Warriors set the tone. And even though Sabrina may not visibly see DeAndre's talent and passion on the field, she can feel it. What does it mean to you that even though she can't see you, she's still there supporting every game? You always go over and give her the football when you score. <laughs> yeah. So I know it still brings you so much joy, and her support still means the same, even if she can't see you. It does, it does. It, it means the world. And, uh, you know, I put her on the first row so she can feel me when I do score. Um, and just having that support, knowing my mom is right there. Sometimes, you know, I peek over just to see her, you know, what she's doing and, and her facial expression because we have family around, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's telling her constantly what's and going on. And she hears on. your name a lot. I mean, your name is yeah, said so, all the time. So. Yeah, so, um, so when she don't hear my name, you know, she'll be like, all right, I didn't hear your name enough. So what, you can what's step going it up. on? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit Harden, that MVP race, but also a lot of fun out in Charlotte tonight with the NBA All-Star Game and the Cougars. They just keep winning. They That's all stop. they do. Just that one little blemish. Utah had the number one defense since the All-Star break coming into this one. But I'll tell you what, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board after tonight. And James Harden didn't even shoot particularly well, considering what we're used to seeing from him, averaging 36 points this season, had only 29 tonight. I don't know if I would go as far as to say it cost them a victory, but it, I think it's definitely going to define this series, how they're going to change or not change this moving forward. And for me, it's all about the consistency. This is not how they were we're calling things during the regular season. I think that's where the Rockets' frustration came. And as much as you can point out moments where, like right there, James did not land under himself, there were also just as many where Clay Thompson clearly on his closeout was fouling. But unlike most kids his age, he's facing the ultimate challenge. 
or lateral, tap, tap, tap to a three step. Calder has been in prosthetics nearly all his life. Born without tibia bones, he had both legs amputated as a toddler. But as you can see, Good. there you go. Now, Good. you're sitting now. That's never stopped him from living his passion. Good. Before we go, what to look forward to this week? We've got softball state, baseball regional, several Houston teams competing in those. Yep. The MVP chants were echoing throughout Toyota Center tonight, as you can imagine. And we'll get to more on Harden here in a second. But the big story tonight, obviously, the return of Chris Paul after missing 17 games. The Rockets going 12 and 5 in his absence. 33 wins. That's the most in school history. Sweet 16 appearance. If Coach Sampson would have been able to promise those things to you when you decided to come here, it would have sounded pretty good, huh? Oh, man, what? I was probably about 12 or 13 years old. She said, you should really do sports reporting. From that moment, a seed was kind of planted, and I really never looked back. I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. And they are very serious about making things better for Deshaun Watson next season, investing in the protection of their quarterback with two of their three first picks being offensive linemen. Now, one of them is already here in Houston. You mentioned the 60-yard touchdown catch he had. He's now passed up Jerry Rice on 60-yard touchdown catches. So when you say he might be better at it, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good look. Why is it important for you, DeAndre Hopkins, to share your story? You could, you could kind of decide to keep that personal. You could not want to be public about that. But why do you think it's important for you to talk about it. The season could start similar to what we saw last season. Hopefully not, but, yeah, stay but away it's, from a tough, that. it's a tough start, especially when you're going to face Drew Brees and the Saints after the season they just came off. Right. Speaking of that defense last week, they set a new NCAA record with 20 passes defended. How much confidence do you have in the way they're playing right now? So next up, they'll travel to UConn on Thursday, and then the Cougars actually end their season in a rematch with the Bearcats in Cincinnati this time on March 10th. I think we're shocked because the expectations were so high, yeah. but I actually do agree with Carmelo. I think these are, you know, little things like communication, things that they can fix on defense, because when you look on offense, there's no doubt this team's going to score. That's going to come. That's not anything that they have to worry about. Same thing. Everyone here was just confused. It was pretty baffling as you're seeing it's second down. They've just got to get within field goal range to tie this thing if they wanted to. Didn't have to go for the win. And I personally think that that's some of the growing pains that are going to come along with having a young mobile quarterback after the game. Coach O'Brien also took some blame. He said that was bad coaching. Either way, they've both just got to get on the same page. I see a sweep. I think their one chance to beat the Rockets was yesterday. They didn't yeah. take advantage. James Harden had off night and I think it's a done deal. It's called a series. It's over. When you look back to how y'all started this season 0-3, do you think that kind of lit that fire really early for this team? 100%. Injuries are of course every athlete's worst nightmare so imagine being able to help prevent those by identifying imbalances in the body, not by the naked eye, but with advanced muscle mapping technology. This primetime matchup so big for the Texans because they're trying to build some momentum here after getting their first win of the season last week. I went to Sam Houston State University where my dad was coaching at the time. Obviously it was pretty nice for me because I got to interview my dad at practice and he would even shoot my stand-ups for me afterwards and I'd put together these pieces. It definitely gives me a lot of confidence and it also I feel like gives me an insight that others may not have. He tonight. took a lot of hits tonight, but he really showed his toughness and he stepped up in the big moments and that's what you know he's been waiting to do all season, what we knew he could do. How proud are you of Corey? I am so proud. He worked so hard for this. He talked about my dad. My whole family is cheering. Breen and Jordan couldn't make it, but Tanya made it. My mom is watching. Bubba sends his love. Go Cougs. And you guys deserve a lot of the credit too. Yes. You help, you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next up on Friday, they've got Kentucky in Kansas City and we're all going to be rooting for him, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll send it back to you guys in Houston. Yeah, so I think all of Houston kind of had a sigh of relief, like, okay, about this pick, because this position was a major necessity for this Texans team. Taking advantage of these early picks here, three interceptions, 70 solo tackles, you win eight games without a missed tackle. Mm -hmm. How do you build on that? Everyone says it's so important between year one and year two to make a big jump. Right. How do you do that? Right. I think if Blake Bortles had not come out of this game, then the Texans defense would have kept the Jaguars out of the end zone. They just had to adjust a little bit to Kessler when he got in there and gave up that one touchdown. But I'm really impressed with where this Texans defense is entering week eight. Now they've got a quick turnaround for Thursday's home game with Miami. The biggest key, I think, in how they've turned things around is their ball security. They are ranked third in the league right now in the turnover takeaway margin. They're plus 10. And Deshaun Watson has only had two turnovers in the past nine games. That's 
that's a part of his game that he has really greatly improved from last season. J.J. Watt back on the field for the first time since his injury. Very emotional day for this Texans team. Now this team hasn't been to the playoffs in nine years, so they tell me that is the goal. That's what they're working towards, and that's what they know would make Chris and Riley proud. Again, they start their season at home on August 31st, and Randy, Rachel, I think I speak for all of us. We're going to be cheering them on this season. I'm actually seeing even more Cougar fans here in Tulsa than I saw before Friday's game. They're starting to show up here to the BOK Center, although the Cougars won't take the court until after the first game, which starts at 510. Back home Monday against Atlanta and Wex, when you look ahead at these next eight games, five of them are on the road against good teams. You hear it from coaches all the time, but here at North Shore, Coach K has truly instilled the concept of never looking too far ahead, taking it one week at a time, and his guys have really bought in. Winning a state title has got to be a goal for you guys. I know you take it week by week, but obviously that's the ultimate goal for any team when they, they start a season. You guys are well on the way to do it. Yeah. What did you see from Ohio State in that win? It seemed like they, they play good defense and they really go through Caleb Weston a lot. But he was actually a quarterback back in high school. He was recruited to Alabama State as a tight end before eventually transitioning to become tackle. So he's got a lot of versatility, something that Coach O'Brien is a big fan of. That's what makes women so great, that we push through and not only are we doing just what they're doing, but we're having to do it with all the doubt and with all the outside voices. I grew up around the sport. And that's one thing that really did help me with my dad being a coach is he really empowered me so much by telling me you can do whatever you want. And I knew just from the confidence he gave me that you can go out there and report on football just as good as the guys can. I don't think you have to carry yourself differently because I don't think you should. I think you should be able to show up and do the exact same job that everyone else does and be taken just as seriously. But I think the biggest thing is just blocking out the noise if people don't give you that same respect and take you seriously. You're in your own lane and you're racing your own race and that's what you always have to remember at the end of the day.